Welcome back to this World of Warcraft Let's Play, your Sambo, and joining us as always is Seraphis, our level 36 Worgen Mage. Say good day, Seraphis. Our fates are intertwined. Our fates are indeed intertwined, and of course, if you were with us in the last episode, you'll know that we ran this, we ran Scarlet Monastery, the graveyard, lots and lots of fun there, and of course, we've got through to a level 30, well, we're nearly at level 37 now, we just managed to scape, scrape through there, you can see we've got a bar and a half of XP to go until we hit a level 37, so that was good, and of course, we've got through to level 39 until we are able to no longer do the Scarlet Monastery library anymore, but that's enough instancing for now we'll give that a break as you can see we're here in Darnassus and it doesn't often rain here hopefully you can see that on the YouTube video it's actually raining here hang on we'll look up at the sky can you see that coming down very cool we're just going to stop here briefly we are don't worry we're not going to hang it around in Darnassus in this episode we're going to head back and do some questing because we've got a new zone to get to amongst other things and you can see here too that in Darnassus we've got some hollowed out carved out pumpkins there why would that be that is because of course it's Halloween that's right well not called Halloween in the World of Warcraft it's called Hallow's End and you can see here that it basically started on Tuesday, October the 18th this year, 2011. And it goes all the way through to, of course, the actual Halloween, which is October 31st. Monday, October 31st. So we've got a good week and a half still. <laughs> what I will do is actually... Oh, oh, that was quite funny. I'll tell you about that in a second. What we'll do is we'll film a little Hallows End special before it's over. Uh, so if you've never seen the festivities and fun and activities that are to be had during Hallows End, well, we'll put an end to that and you'll be able to um, laugh along with us and check it all out. So we'll probably do that episode on a number of characters uh, because a lot of the stuff is of a higher level and we wouldn't be able to do it here on Seraphis all by herself. Now that was quite funny before one of these guys here, the Night Elf Commoners, and you can see they're actually wearing masks there. One of them's wearing a Tauren mask, you can see it right there. And the other one here looks like they're wearing, oh they're wearing a female Tauren mask. And one of them actually yelled out for the Horde which is quite funny, and of course because they're trying to pretend to be the Horde. And nice. by the way, if you are watching this one before our Hallows End uh, special, if you like, this is where you actually pick up your Hallows End quests from. So you can see here, to celebrate the birth of yet another deadly enemy is an odd thing to say the least, yet we will still join our allies in their festivities. And you can see here, a season for celebration and the costumed orphan matron. Those two quests there are what you would pick up, luck, and they, these commoners by the way are in most uh, faction cities right smack dab in the middle so you can't miss them and look at this here's the headless ghost this is the dungeon master here by the way uh, and you can see here we can't go but this is the dungeon master that takes us straight through to the instance where you fight the headless horseman and the headless horseman instance is a big part of Hallow's End and that actually gives you some really really cool items and I've got all of them on my main and I'll show you them in the special anyway we'll save all that for the Hallow's End special but just letting you know that we will be doing it in the meantime let's check the old mailbag because I'm pretty sure we'll have some stuff from the auction house and look at that we have got a whole bunch of gold there we go nine gold 71 silver one gold 71 silver another 71 silver this is a bunch of coarse stones that we're selling yeah for 71 silver two gold 39 two gold 39 for tin bars it all adds up 21 gold 79 there for medium leather again be a skinner for goodness sake while you're leveling get skinning eight gold there for some fused wiring and we've got 14 gold for copper bar they're great there of course for mainly for engineering practices or engineering professions of course stone there that actually didn't sell so we'll leave that in the bag and what else here these things here didn't sell but we did sell the thick spider silk there so you can see already we've got 876 gold again pretty much just through the auction house just through selling our wares through selling our skins and pelts and also of course through uh, selling the ore that we get and of course our greens as well that we pick up along the way and let's not forget also with all of our um, ill-gotten gains well they're not ill-gotten gains at all <laughs> with our very legit gotten gains we were able to buy some glyphs 
in the last episode so don't forget that we got the glyph of molten armor there an additional two percent spell crit strike chance for us which is very handy we've got a glyph of slow fall now so even though that says zero on the hot bar there in terms of our regents that you normally need you can see now that we can basically spam this as much as we like and we can also put it on other people very handy in instance runs and we've got the glyph of frost nova which basically means that the enemies that we've actually frost nova can take a lot more of a beating before that um, debuff breaks and it's an additional 20% damage before that does break so there we go we need to bump on our refresh the timer on our molten lava uh, molten armor rather molten lava good lord also need to just double check that we don't have any spells that are going to come up at level 37 because it would be annoying to leave here and only have to come back. So now there we go, level 38. I'm looking forward to that, folks. Look at that. It's the Conjure Refreshment. We've been waiting basically our entire Seraphis career for this. Used to get that uh, Conjure Refreshment way back in the early days right at level 1. And, of course, now you have to wait till level 38. So I'm looking forward to that. What else have we got here? 44 and this one's at 52 okay so yeah okay to go now where are we going well we've had this here this quest here in the stone talon mountains all's clear report to commander thomas wellpole or walpole at stone talon pass in the southern barrens if we ever look on the map and see where that is if we zoom out and go to the stone talon mountain you can see it's in the bottom right hand corner there down the southeast that's where we're going to be heading and that's basically here the corner of the southern barren so i think that's where we're going to be heading next let's have a look just at our quest log again and check the levels now if you're asking hey sambo how come you've got levels of quests in your log how do you do that because of course that's not a normal uh, function of world of warcraft that's basically an add-on this one here called um, ct mod literally ct mod look it up go grab it download it it's very cool it does a bunch of little things it used to do a whole lot more uh, in the old days but of course the base wow client does a lot of those things now um, but one of the things that it does do is it puts a quest level beside the quest entry in your log and that's very handy so you can see here we probably do we've got a choice of either going to um well actually we are going to the southern barrens when we hit 35 technically we've got a choice of going to either feralis or the dust wallow marsh and you'll find that they're from these hero boards over here heroes call boards and they're great if you're ever stuck and you don't know where to go in terms of which zone you need to um, end up uh, going towards come and talk to one of these heroes call boards they're in every major city as well and they basically will give you a level appropriate zone to head to and you can see currently it's given us these 35 ones and uh, again we're not really worrying about the level matching what we're trying to do is actually play through the content of the game but if you are stuck you don't know where to go go to a board it'll tell you all right so what does that mean for us it means that we can look at the beautiful view here in Tarnassus and never get sick of that but it does mean that we need to go catch a bird and we're going to catch a very long flight which I won't put you through let's hop on our tiger like a tiger Okay, you're only going to get that if you're an Australian, unfortunately. Never mind. All right, so head over to the flight point. In fact, what we'll do is we'll head over to the flight point down the bottom of Rutherin, uh, down the bottom of the Teldrassil tree, rather, uh, because otherwise we just have to fly down there. Might as well port down there instantly. It'll save us a bit of time once it loads up. There we go. Oh, yeah, it's very rainy down here. Very cool. Don't often see the rain. Right, so you'll see if we come along to the flight master here. Alright, so we're heading for a very long flight. Now, we could go to Honor's stand over there, but I don't, I think that goes past where we need to. So we'll probably go to the Northwatch Expedition Base. We'll just go in and check on our map, shall we? Let's have a look here. Alright, so there's the Northwatch Expedition Base. Yeah, and we'll probably ride through there. Let's go to the Southern Barrens. Oh, then again, there's Honor's stand. Yeah, but that'll kind of take us a bit far in, I think. So, yeah, we'll go to... Let's zoom out, zoom back in. What am I doing? There we go. All right, yeah, Northwatch Expedition. So, rather a large flight. Um, boy, so in other words, it goes all the way down Darkshore, all the way through Ashenvale, and pretty much down to the bottom of Stone Talon. Uh, so, look, I used to have an add-on that would give you a flight timer, and it would come up here where your cast bar is. Don't know what that was actually and in fact i thought that my current cast bar which is quartz the add-on called quartz i thought that that did it but obviously it doesn't um, so anyhow that's going to be a long flight so 
Uh, yeah, we'll get over to the shore here and then we'll let you be and we'll get back to you once we're reaching our destination. Look at that, it's not raining over here in Dark Shore. It was only raining over in Teldrassil. So you can see the tree there, the tree stump, top of the tree, just in the shadows. Do you know back in the old days, you never used to actually be able to see that far from here in Aberdeen. You couldn't actually see that far because the draw distance has been increased since then. Since technology has got better, they actually increased the draw distance of the actual engine itself. So there you go. All right, so while Vista has a spaz, I think that's probably a good time to take a break in the flight, and uh, we'll catch up with you again when we get closer to our destination. See you then. And we're getting close now, folks. Here we are in the Windshear Crag. You can see we've actually entered the Stone Talon Mountain Zone now. You see it down there below us. We're high above the treetops. Love flying around in this game. So yeah, we're getting close. You can see on my little mini map, we're nearly there. We're just heading to the southeast corner of the mountain range. And that's just going to be over here somewhere, I think. There's the archaeological dig site and the zeppelin. You remember we quested down in there earlier on in the series, the Grim Totem, Totem outpost over there to my right. It's all really cool, isn't it, seeing it all up from here. You can get a bird's eye view. Really awesome. Right, I'm just going to block that player there for spamming. Go away. There we go. Alright, so we made it. Let's hop on our high horse, or in this case, of course, our Daiga. And now we're going to go for a bit of a run. So you can see what we need to do is get down. Let's just take a bit of a wild, crazy jump. Now, what will be interesting, you might remember we had some problems over here with the Grim Totems and their ability and well their non-ability to stay friendly with us. Oh look at that, they're actually still friendly. Alright, oh, that's good. There he is, Grundig Dark Cloud. Hello, still really love that model by the way. It's kind of like a a diabolical tauren, I guess. <laughs> Would be a good way of describing it. Alright, so what we want to do, you can see on our map there we actually want to hit the road. Stay away from the cliff stormers. And there we go, right, so all we need to do is follow this road now, and we're going to head down to the southeast camp. This is the old camp, and there is, yep, that was that quest, General Voltar. You'll remember we did a quest here where we took out a series of those generals. And love the Tauran architecture here. You know what, a friend of mine just started a Tauran Druid. I was talking to her the other day and uh, I was telling her how I just absolutely adore it and she's only just started I'm really keen to get her feedback ask her what she thinks because seriously just love that whole starting experience now what's this oh this looks like it's the graveyard probably where you come when you need to spirit res all right so we're nearly there you'll remember that we ran this way the wrong way uh, when we were dealing with the GM when he teleported us back so we have kind of been here a little bit but now we're here officially, and basically I think up through there, yep, Stone Talon Pass, up through those stone gates up ahead is the infamous, the world-renowned Barons. That's right, Barons Chat, that's where it was invented. And of course, again, in the old days it used to be one huge, massive zone stretching all the way from Ashenvale, all the way down to Thousand Needles there. Massive, massive zone. You used to have to do it on foot as well. You were never high enough to actually have a mount. And you know what? It made a man out of you. That's what it did. Put hairs on your chest or something like that, uh, but now what they've done is they've basically noobified it, made it a little easier, and of course that's quite okay because not all of us have hours and hours and hours spare to play this game, um, so basically now it's the Northern and Southern Barons, so what we're going to see is the Southern Barons, and trust me, you are going to get a big surprise if you're used to seeing the Barons. Now this looks interesting, bit of a standoff going on over here, we've got these Hordies over there, the Scouts, and look at that, there we go, a towering Plane Strider. Oh, fantastic! Plane striders are absolutely synonymous with the barons. If you see one of these, all you can think of seriously is the barons. Well, that's certainly uh, what it happens to me, and it brings back some amazing memories. I look, even though the barons was, I don't know, way too big and way too hard in terms of running around on foot. I've still got the fondest memories of doing it over and over and over again just because you did it, you know. It was just, there were some really cool quest lines in there and of course you did it for the horde. Very cool. 
you need something? All right, Hail Mage, just up ahead you'll find Honor's Stand, the alliance only link between Stone Talon and the coast. The road's a treacherous one though, I'm speaking from experience, there we go, all's clear. You say the Grim Totem are no longer a threat, that's great, but we've got Horde all up our keisters. See you later. See you later, 200 XP. All right, Heroes Call Southern Barons, we face heavy Horde counterattacks daily, Mage. We need every pair of hands we can get to keep them at bay. So we'll grab that. Another couple of hundred XP. More Stormwind XP as well. Uh, rep, rather. Here we go. Running the gauntlet. Look around you, mage. We've had no luck dislodging the horde from the hidden trails that overlook this valley. They appear out of nowhere to ambush our supply caravans and then disappear into the hills. I need you to run the gauntlet to Honor's stand and let them know the roads still aren't safe. Talk to Mattingly, the supplies officer by the gate, and kill a few of those brutes along the way. There we go, kill eight Hunter Hill Scouts. Around. And I'm sure if we have a look at our map, basically we just need to head... Where is it? Yep. So we just need to head a little bit to the east. Oh, and he's got another quest for us. Interesting. Hello. Breaking the siege, horde scouts hiding in the ruins up ahead, ambushed my supply train. Hmm, interesting. The only two of my bodyguards made it out of there alive, and me, I used to have hair. Alright, so he's a bit worried, I think. Uh, the supplies I was delivering are scattered through the ruins up ahead. Gather them up and take them to Janice Mattingly at Honor's Stand. If they can't make it to Stone Count Talon, at least we can keep them out of the Horde's hand. So gather ten Stone Stellan... Stellan Oh, now I'm tongue-tied. Tongue-tied? Boy, I'm doubly tongue-tied now. Gather 10 Stone Talon Supply Crates. Whew, there we go. 10 internet points for me for getting that right. From the ruins west of Honest Stand. We'll one. absolutely uh, accept that quest. All right. Let's we go put up our molten shield, of course, our molten armor. And then let's get into business taking out these. Oh, we've got a warrior on our hands there. How do I know it was a warrior? Because he charged and stunned us. And of course, level 30. That's fantastic because he is actually going to be giving us XP, which is great. Oh, it's good to be playing well. You know, in real life, I've been very busy, sadly. Very busy and very stressed at my day job. Uh, and I haven't been able to record well for a couple of days. In fact, probably about four days. I know you guys won't have noticed, of course, because we film these weeks in advance just to allow for real life to get in the way, as it frequently does. But, um, yeah, haven't had an opportunity to play for quite some time. And you know what? When you have a break from WoW and you come back to it, it's just, seriously, it's so much fun, honestly. It's that age-old argument as well. People say, oh, I'm bored of WoW. There's nothing to do. Well, you know what? I honestly blame nobody but you. You should blame yourself because if you're overdoing it, just like anything, too much of anything isn't good. And if you're playing WoW for 12 hours a day, trust me, you're going to burn out on it. You just have this sneaking suspicion. Uh, and, of course, what happens is you lose that magic because it becomes like a daily chore. And the things that you sort of really notice, you start taking for granted. Like for example, right now I'm running around and I'm just really enjoying the scenery. Now if I was playing day in and day out, I wouldn't even notice it, you know what I mean? So every little thing, if, if you take your time, slow things down, don't play for hours and hours on end. And of course, by the way, don't say, oh, Sambo, you know, you're lucky you've got a job. I don't have a job. I'm unemployed. That's okay. But there are other things you can do just apart from playing well. And even if all you like doing is playing games, play some different ones. Play a different uh, style of game. You know, play an RPG. Um, play a real-time strategy. Play an arcade platformer. You know, break it up. Mix it up. I mean, look, I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I'm just trying to give you some friendly advice to say, hey, I have had a break from one. Well, only for probably, I don't know, three nights maybe, not much in the scheme of things. And coming back here to play it, I just want to play for the rest of the evening. You know, it's just, I'm really, really enjoying it. It's the same with DCUO, it's the same with any game. You're going to get sick of it if you just play it over and over and over and over and over. And then you're going to turn into one of those people that complain about it all the time. Again, there's nothing wrong with complaining about a game because no game is perfect. And Lord only knows you guys have heard a couple of episodes where I rant and rave about DC Universe online. 
Um, and that's okay, there's nothing wrong with that, but of course, if you take it too far, then you just start becoming a hater. And that's doing nobody any good, including yourself. Anyway, there ends the sermon from Reverend Sambo. <laughs> we'll uh, stop now. But anyway, point is, I'm having an absolute ball. And I'm not doing anything too exciting, but of course it seems exciting because I haven't been here for a little while. Alright, so there we go. Eight out of eight of our Hunter Hill Scouts slain. We've got eight out of ten of these. Oh, he's sneaking out from behind the bushes, eh? Right, let's test this Frost Nova. See how much damage he can take. Mind you, that's quite a high... Yeah, I was going to say, that's a high damage spell. Probably not a good example of our talent point. Or rather, our glyph. Alright, so this will be the ninth Stone Talon Supply that we grab. And what are we... Oh, there we go. There's number 10. You know what? I'm just having so much fun. We're just going to attack some things anyway. And look, let's wand him to death. Let's see how much damage we can do with my wand. And, oh, okay. Here's a question for you guys from the old school vanilla and Burning Crusade WoW days. Okay, so you're not going to be able to answer this unless you're from that era. Why, and this is going to give you 20 internet points, why would I do this back in the old days? And why would I do this and nothing else? Why would I come somewhere and spend ages and ages wanding a mob to death? Okay, that is the question. There's a very specific reason why I would do this rather than use my abilities. And to give you a clue, that reason is no longer in the game, which actually makes me a bit sad because I do like it. Did like it. It's just another little piece of... Uh, well, actually, I'm not going to say anything because I'll give the game away. Um, but there you go. So if you're an old school wower, tell me why I'd want something to death. Oops. There you go. Wasted an arcane uh, explosion then. Didn't need it. All right. Giddy up. Let's hop on our flaming guardian here. And head on up to our quest, of course, which is running the gauntlet there. We're off to Honor's Stand. Alright, doing some annoying PvP moves there. Anyway, <clears throat> like I said, haven't played for a few days. Give me a break. Give me a break. All right, let's blink. And he's toast. All right, so something tells me we're going to be getting close to on a stand. Honours stand, rather. Now, this is all new. So just reminding you guys that... Oh! Look at that! We found Honours stand, and congratulations! We actually... <laughs> the XP that we got from the Discovery... Yes, congratulations, Seraphis! Woo! Uh, fist pump, why don't you? Uh, that actually tipped us over to level 37. What a classic. All right, you can see something glowing down the bottom here. That's right, that's our talent tree window. That means we've got one unspent point in our talent tree. Always love when that happens, of course. Uh, it's a love-hate thing because you never know what to actually spend it in unless you're following a build. But let's see what we've got here. We've got improved blink. We're not interested in that. We've got prismatic cloak. Reduces all damage taken by 2% and reduces the fade time of your invisibility spell by one second. That's a talent for later on. Uh, Arcane Flows here reduces the cooldown of your Presence of Mind. Now, let's not forget that Presence of Mind lets our next Mage spell with a casting time less than 10 seconds become an instant cast spell. And that's currently got a cooldown of 2 minutes. So, um, oh, hang on. Have we already got that? Yeah, we have. Oh, okay, so this is the improvement. This one actually reduces it again. So that's quite good. Uh, what else does it give us? Arcane power and invisibility spells by 12%. Now, do we have arcane? No, we don't have those yet either. And the cooldown of your evocation spell by one minute. So they're kind of cool. They're very good utilities. Not that we're using our utilities at the moment. So, yeah, okay. What else have we got? Counter spell also silences the target. We've got, uh, eh, okay, maybe we will do the cooldown one. I don't know if we've got any that actually imp increase the damage. 
Not really. Counterspell also silences. Reduces damage on us. Okay, we'll take the bonus here, I think, for the extra cooldowns. We'll learn that. And there we go. All done. Now, where's our evocation? So our evocation has a three-minute cooldown now, and presence of mind has 1.76. 1.76 minute cooldown. Oh, well, better than a kick in the keister, as our NPC said before. Oh, hang on. I've gone all that way and forgotten to hand in the quest. Got so excited about dinging. Whoopsie. Now, by the way, let's have a look, and you'll see there, yeah, look at that. The Scarlet Monastery Graveyard has actually disappeared off of our list that we can queue for. Of course, we can always go and run it manually. There's no problem there. Uh, but you can see what's been added at the bottom here. We've got Alderman, and we've got the Dire Maul, the Warpwood Quarter. Dire Maul. But you, a lot of you folks will remember that instance as well from the old WoW days. I actually loved Dire Maul as an instance. Okay, here we go. Running the gauntlet. They're ambushing the roads to Stone Talon 2. We can't get a break from here. Where are they coming from anyways? Have Let's complete that quest. Hello. And breaking the siege. Then we got the Stone Talon supplies. What? Our supplies? These were meant for Stone Talon. No matter, at the rate we're going, we need them more here. Honor's stand has been cut off from the coast, Seraphis. Commander Singleton is at his wit's end. Safe travels. How are you? Okay, futile resistance. Ah, <laughs> oh, I love the memes and the pop culture references in this game. Here you go, guys. Here's another chance for 10 internet points. What is that quest referring to? I'm going to give you absolutely absolutely no clues if you don't know what futile resistance is referring to then i'm sorry you're gonna to have to hand in your nerd badge that's right so what is that 10 internet internet points bleh, is up for grabs there let me know in the comments below okay seraphis i certainly don't want to deliver my report to commander singleton without at least a little bit of good news we've got to wrestle control of these roads back from these horde holdouts from what I can gather, Kona Thunderwalk is the name of the ringleader. He's got a camp just north of here. The Stone Talon native, he knows these roads better than his own hide. If we can wipe him out, resistance from the west might vanish. Find and kill Kona Thunderwalk, and then report to Commander Singleton. All right, there you go, so you can see what he looks see like there. Let's see on the map, check out where he is, and he's, oh, he's up there north of us somewhere. So can we get to him this way? I honestly don't know. We'll soon find out. Oh, is that him? No, it's a scout. Ah, there he goes. All right. Slowed him down, of course, with a good old frost bolt. Oh, look at that! He's actually turned into a bear, so he's obviously a druid. By the way, there you go. You got a chance to see the bear form, the Torin bear form, which is a little bit different than other things. And by the way, while we're here, let's kill our very first plane strider. Again, bringing back memories of the Horde, especially Thunder Bluff, and of course the starting area in Mulgore. And the Barons, they run rampant. Oh, and you look at that, he stunned us as well. Forgot they did that. Nasty little things, but the cool thing is, hopefully we'll be able to skin these guys. And there we go, yes we can, and our skinning has increased to, what does that increase to? 201. Let's have a look at our professions here and go to skinning. You can see 201 out of 240. We've uh, managed to achieve Master of Anatomy rank 2, increasing our crit strike chance by 6 there. But very soon I'd say we'll be able to move on from experts, so we must keep an eye on that as well. We've also got rank 1 toughness in mining, and that means our stamina has increased by 3 points. So that's pretty cool as well. And look at that, folks. It's really starting to look like the Barons now. I bet this brings back lots of memories for you. Let's get on all fours. Get our running wild stance up and happening. And then let's go hand in and at least make our way to this new outpost before we finish off for the episode. And by the way, you can see here on the map, look at this. Something's a little bit ominous there. What is that in the middle of the Barons? Does that look like lava? Hmm... All right, well, there's a little clue. Because, boy, are you going to get a shock if you've played well and you've run the Barons left, right, and center for hours and hours and weeks and days and ends and months and years. You are really going to fall over once you see it. Trust me. Trust me, trust me. Although I don't know if we're going to be able to get a good view of it at the moment because, of course, all of this is new. Yeah, you can, in fact, that's why they've got the pe peasants there and the peons, if you like, building. 
all of this on a stand. Now, by the way, here's another little piece of history for you guys. Guess what happens if you click on a peasant? You ready? More work. There you go. Now, gosh, this is going to be an internet point bonanza, this episode. Another 10 internet points. What are these sound effects from? What game? What, what is it? What? What is it? No. More work. What is it? More work. All right, that'll do. There you go, another 10 internet points. So if you add them all up over this episode, you stand to win a whole bunch. So come on, there you go. All right, so where are we headed? We are going to see Commander Singleton. And looks like he's over here. Oh, and we've got some repairs coming up here somewhere. That's very handy. Weapon vendor. Oh, and look, they've got the carved out pumpkins there as well. Oh, we can do some smelting here. We can sell off our junk. And we've got a nice axe to put on the auction house. We'll definitely keep that. We've got some coarse stone. We'll sell our mana pot there. We've got some copper ore. Seeing as we've around. only got a couple, what I might do is just a little treat for you guys who always want to see it. We'll do some smelting here. There we go. Smelt some copper. And of course, I'm doing that here because we're in front of a forge. It's the only reason we're doing it. There we go. And this is the Halloween's... Um, stuff that I'm talking about here you can see that basically in all of the outposts they'll put candles up they'll put the carved out pumpkins up in all sorts of crazy places and they'll hang these skeletons here on the doors as well which is pretty cool bye bye, Andrew. right now have we got enough supplies of food and water it looks like we have what's that yep all right that's that's good and this is who we've come to see commander singleton well met so our supplies aren't getting through. Hmm, Honest Stan just gets more and more isolated. Still, the defeat of Thunderwalk should send a signal to our foes that we mean to stay. Thank you, Seraphis. You are welcome. And look at that, we get Singleton's Sash, but unfortunately, it's not, oh, it's one of those nasty ones. It's got one less intellect than we already have, but it has got more armor and more stamina. Ah, no, we want the intellect. So look, you know, I'm actually gonna take the other one deliberately so that what we do don't. Lions? Equip it in 2050 XP. You can see we're already just over two bars into level 37 here, so we're doing very well for ourselves. You can see we've got a little goblin here with some quests to hey, pick up. Pleased to meet you. My, you're a tall one. We are a tall one indeed. We've got the apple bobbing here, and of course, that's all about the Halloween festivities, including the candy bucket here. So we'll actually maybe do that one in the next episode. Now, can I see just a little sneak peek treat? Here we go, the Great Divide. This is it, folks. Look at that. That is what, or this is part of what has happened to the Barons. It has been basically sundered, and that um, Great Divide there, pretty much, look at that. You can see it now. There we go. It basically goes right throughout the entire Barons, basically separating the Northern and the Southern Barons. Okay, so that's it right there whereas this was all one big um zone before it's no longer so there you go now southern barons that's where we need to be so you can see it on the map there and you might see something else on the map that you won't be used to seeing much of in the barons and that's a whole bunch of green stuff but uh, enough of that that'll do we're giving it all away here and of course we want to save that for the upcoming episodes once again if you've never played the barons you're in for a treat if you have played the barons Yep, you won't recognize. Well, you will recognize places, but uh, look at that. It's basically been sliced in half, and that goes on for a very, very long distance. All right, but in the meantime, of course, that's it. We've run out of time. We'll pick up quests in the next episode. Of course, the next episode will be with uh, Yogurt, our new goblin, uh, what is she, a goblin shaman? Uh, so we'll uh, see Seraphis the episode after that. Just clarifying once again, folks, that we'll be basically alternating between the two, just so you don't get confused. That is exactly what will be happening. Now, by the way, do we have any quests here? Apart from the Hallow's End one? No, we don't. That's interesting. We've got low-level quests. Ah. All right, so we may have to go elsewhere unless there's some in here that we don't know about, but I'm sure we'll figure it out and find some. Anyhow, that's it from us. We've run way over time. On behalf of myself, Sambo, and of course our wonderful Wargan Mage, now level 37 Wargan Mage, it's us saying take care. I hope you're having a great day wherever in the world you are. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time, and bye-bye.